Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the 15th and final video in the mobile weather app series. A link to the app website is in the description below, as well as links to the other 14 videos in this series. In this video, I'm going to change our API Surface class to use the new combined framework. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notifications whenever I post new videos. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up. If you feel inclined to support my work, you can always buy me a coffee. I'll leave a link in the description below. No pressure though. At WWDC 2019, Apple introduced Combine. It's Apple's functional reactive programming answer to RX Swift. There's a lot of hype about Combine right now, and it can be confusing and somewhat complicated to get your teeth into at first. I have to admit that I'm just on the learning path myself and have discovered a number of different resources, and each one takes a different approach to introducing Combine, and for me, I need all of them. And I've had to retrace my steps several times, taking baby steps to get a handle on it. These are the resources that I've purchased for your reference. The first thing I purchased out of the gate was Ray Wenderlich's Combine Asynchronous Programming with Swift. If you prefer to learn through video, Muhammad Azam, or Azam Sharp, has a Udemy series called The Complete Guide to Combined Framework in iOS Using Swift. For the most part, Azam steps you through the same examples that you'll find in the Ray Wenderlich book. Sometimes I prefer being taught than reading, so this really works for me. Another excellent resource is Donnie Wall's Practical Combine, an introduction to combine with real examples. Back to video resources is Combine Swift for Mere Mortals by Subdigital Ben Shearman of the NS Screencast fame. This too is an excellent resource, but I'm finding that to get the most out of it, I need to up my game a bit and get a better foundation before going further into the course. <clears throat> before going further into the course. The most recent purchase was Dim Sum Thinking or Daniel Steinberg's Combined Quick Start. I'm not sure if it's because I had gone through the introductory parts of the first four resources that I have shared, or if it's because I really enjoyed Daniel's approach, that this one is resonating with me the most. Everyone has a different learning style, so I'm not going to recommend one over the other. As you can see, I purchase and support a lot of other Swift content providers' materials, and that's why I have a request to support my coffee fund at the beginning of each video. If I'm going to provide quality videos to you, I need to make sure that I have good understanding of the concepts too, and quality is not necessarily free. Anyway, on to Combine. I'm not about to start teaching you Combine. The question is, should you start to implement it in parts of your project before you have an understanding of it? I believe you can, if you understand at least what's going on within the context of your implementation. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to change our API service to use Combine. I won't have to change any other code. That's just one service class singleton we built way back in video 4. So what is Combine? Well, Apple's definition of Combine is that it's a framework that provides a declarative Swift API for processing values over time. And these values can represent many kinds of asynchronous events. Combine declares publishers to expose values that can change over time and subscribers to receive those values from the publishers. And several foundation types expose their functionality through publishers, including Timer, Notification Center, and URL Session. And it's that last one, the URL Session, that we use in our API service. By adopting Combine, you'll make your code easier to read and maintain by centralizing your event processing code and eliminating troublesome techniques like nested closures and convention-based callbacks. In the most simplest terms, there are three concepts in Combine. They are publishers, subscribers, and operators. Both publishers and subscriber protocol have two associated types. The first one is input-output, which defines a kind of values published, received by publishers and subscribers. And the publishers receive method requires that the subscriber's input matches the publisher's output type. Second associated type is the failure, which must conform to combine latest, 
and Combine Latest is another operator that lets you combine different publishers. It also lets you combine publishers of different value types, which can be extremely useful. However, instead of interleaving the emissions of all publishers, it emits a tuple with the latest values of all publishers whenever any of them emit a value. Confused? There is one catch. The original publisher and every publisher passed to combine latest must emit at least one value before the combined latest will emit anything. Well, I like to think of combine as being like an assembly line. You start out at the beginning of an assembly line as the publisher, and along the way, different people manipulate the product. As it moves into their station, they know what to expect. It should be the same every time. They are subscribing to what the previous station published. If they, as the subscriber, receive the product and for some reason the product is substandard, it can fail and is rejected from the timeline. Or perhaps in some cases, those mistakes can be ignored. When it passes through the current station on the assembly line, we can operate on that product and make some changes before passing it on to the next station. So let's copy the code we have right now and create a new file called API Service Combine. and I'll paste in the entire code. I'll change the class name and the singleton name to API Service Combine. Now the getJSON function call is not going to change. We're still going to receive a string for the URL and convert it to a URL and form a URL request. And then we're going to use a URL session to make the API request. The difference this time is that we are not going to use the shared data task method. Instead, we're going to use combine to publish onto our assembly line, so to speak. Along the way, we can either reject the product or accept it and pass it on. In that case, then we can use our completion handler that uses the result type as the argument for our closure, just as we did previously. So to use combine, we first need to import combine. And as I mentioned, instead of using the URL session's shared data task method, we're going to use the combined counterpart. So let's comment out this code here to keep it around for reference. Instead of using data task with request with the completion handler like before, we use the data task publisher for request. It does not have a completion handler. What we're doing is starting the assembly line. It takes one argument, and that's our request. When it gets to the first station on the assembly line, we need to unpack what the publisher has sent us. So we unpack what the data task publisher has sent us as output. And what is that? If you option click on the data task publisher and then open in developer documentation, you'll see that the publisher is a URL session data task publisher. And as I said, every publisher must have an output and a failure type. So let's see what that output is. Let's drill down a little bit. We see that it's a tuple with data and URLs response. Well, I can use the combine map operator to get the data from the data task publisher output. And we can use $0 to represent the output tuple so $0.data is what we want to extract. Map will pass on the specified key path to the next station on our assembly line. It receives, unpacks, and publishes like every good station on the assembly line. Now that the data has been unpacked, the role of the next station is to decode the data. And this requires that we specify a type, which in our case is the generic T, and a decoder so we can choose an instance of JSON decoder. However, we know that at least in our case, we'll need to specify a date decoding strategy. So we had better create an instance of the JSON decoder prior to publishing to our assembly line and set a default date and key decoding strategy. And for both, we can assign the default values as they are set as defaults in our get JSON function parameters. And with that, we can replace our JSON decoder construct here with simply decoder. 
Now, all this is happening on the background thread. And if we're going to want to work with this in data for our UI, we'll have to receive it on the main thread before it gets passed on. And we can do this with a receive on run loop main. At this point, our operators have either been successful in decoding our data or it has failed. So we now need to complete our function with our completion closure. Combine provides two built-in subscribers, which automatically match the output and failure types of their attached publishers. The first is assign, and it's used to immediately assign every element it receives to a property of a given object, using a key path to indicate the property. Well, that's not what we want to do here. Sync is the other subscriber, and it takes two closures. The first closure executes when it receives, and it's subscriber completion type, which is an enumeration that indicates whether the publisher finished normally or failed with an error. And the second closure executes when it receives an element from the publisher. Well, this is great because our getJSON function has a completion handler that's a result type that is either our decoded data or an error. So what does that mean? Well, let's add the subscriber now and hit enter on each of the completion blocks. The first one is that enumeration that indicates whether the publisher finished normally or failed with an error. And the second will be our successful decoded data. So let's assign the first variable task completion and the second to the variable decoded data. And since task completion is an enumeration, we can switch on it. So we'll get case.finished and case.failure. Now, if our publisher has finished, it means that we've received the decoded data without any errors and the receive value closure would have executed. So we can simply just return. In the case of a failure, however, there must have been an error. So we can assign it to a variable. And since this will be a decoding error, I'll call it that and then execute our closure using the results failure. This will be the same as what we did in our original getJSON function. If it didn't fail, we have our decoded data. So we can execute our completion using the results success case, passing in our decoded data as the associated value. We're almost done. There's one more step that needs to be taken. We're getting this warning that the result of call to sync is unused. When we connect the publisher to a subscriber, this connection must be kept alive in something called a subscription. We don't tend to interact with the subscription directly, but sync returns a token that is of type cancelable that we need to hold on to to keep our subscription and hence this connection alive. If the subscription goes out of scope, the subscription is automatically canceled. So we'll need to store this token somewhere. And there are a couple of ways to do this. We can create a property of our class that is an optional type any cancelable. And then we can assign our data task publisher to this variable like this. There may, however, be many combined publishers in any given class. So what is typically done is to create a set where we can store them all. So instead of this variable, we can create a set of any cancelables instead. And I'll initialize it as an empty set. And then instead of assigning this data task publishers token to a single value, we can add it to the set. And this is done using the store method. It has one argument and that is our set. And notice that it uses the and symbol as a prefix. If we option click on this store function now, we see that our argument is marked with the in out keyword and thus requires the and. That's it. A nice clean function now that has a clearly defined path from start to finish. So it's time to test. All we have to do is to go to our forecast list view model and change our call to the API service to now use the API service combined. And I need to change the error type in the completion handler result failure type 
to an API service combine API error. Let's test. There you have it. We've successfully implemented combine for our API call. Well, that's it for this series of videos. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you stayed with me, congratulations. If you like this and want to see more, please give all of the videos that you have found particularly useful a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Every week I hope to release a new video of some topic related to Swift and Swift UI development. Also remember, if you are inclined and you want to support my channel, you can buy me a coffee. It helps me purchase the resources I need to give me the incentive to keep on churning out these videos.